Hi friends of cocktails and lovebirds! Today we'll make a pair of cocktails perfect for Valentine's Day. I know that's more than a week away, but that gives you time if you need to get some of the ingredients. Most of us won't be going out for dinner on Valentine's Day, or anywhere else for that matter. So I'll show you how to make something special for yourself and your significant other. We'll make my versions of two well-known cocktails, the penicillin and the aviation. They look different, right? That's because we'll clarify some lemon juice today. But before we start, these cocktails may be called Mr. and Miss, but you can of course make and drink them as you wish. I just want you all to try something new. Let's start, it's cocktail time. I first made these cocktails as a part of a Valentine's Day menu at the bar I worked at. You still remember that, right? Bars, work, good times. But what good are cocktails if nobody can drink them? So I'll show you how to make them at home. For Mr. Cocktail, you'll need Scotch whiskey. I'm using Chivas Regal Extra, since it's an extra special occasion. Benedictine for a herbal addition to the cocktail. Clarified lemon juice, we'll get to that in a second. And simple syrup. Last part is Isla Single Malt Scotch. That will float on the top. Like I said, it's a twist on a penicillin. For the Miss Cocktail, we'll stick to the aviation recipe a bit more. Gin. We'll use Monkey 47. Premium gin from the Black Forest in Germany. Maraschino liqueur. Again, some clarified lemon juice. And of course, Creme de Violette. For that floral old and the beautiful color. Before we start making these cocktails, I'll show you how to make clarified lemon juice. And for that you'll need agar agar. You can get it through the affiliate link in the description below. We'll start by squeezing 300 ml or 10 ounces of lemon juice. Use whatever technique you prefer, but I find this to be quite fast. Squeezing it like this also expresses the essential oils from the pills. Then we'll measure out 75 ml or 2.5 ounces and use that to mix with agar or agar agar, both names are used. This is a jelly like substance obtained from red algae, which makes it a great vegan alternative to gelatin. Discovered in 17th century Japan, it is now used in microbiology, cuisine and of course mixology. We'll add 0.2% in weight of agar compared to the total amount of lemon juice. For us, that's 0.6 grams. Make sure you don't use more than that because too much agar will give the juice a metallic taste. If you're clarifying juices with a more subtle taste, like a mandarin, use even less, 0.1% of agar. And the reason we're only using a quarter of the total liquid is that agar needs to boil to hydrate and we don't want to heat up all of the juice. That could alter the flavor. If you're using heat-sensitive liquids, like strawberry or cucumber juice or any spirits, use one part water to mix in the agar, then add three parts of your room temperature liquid of choice. Slowly bring it to a bowl to give agar the time to hydrate and dissolve, then mix constantly with the whisk. Once you see that agar is fully dissolved, take it off the heat, then slowly add the rest of the lemon juice, whisking constantly. If we did it the other way around, agar could chill down too fast and form a gel before it was incorporated with everything. Transfer the mixture to a bowl and place it in an ice bath or a freezer to form a soft gel. That will happen in about an hour or two. Then comes the filtration. First, we lightly break it apart. Then take another bowl with a strainer and a cheesecloth and pour the gel over. The agar will trap all the impurities and you'll end up with clarified lemon juice. This not only looks good, but also makes for lighter and brighter cocktails. It can be carbonized and it's suitable for making pre batch cocktails. Since the filtration takes a long time and this is still citrus juice, you can place it in the fridge and let it clarify there. You may be tempted to rush things and squeeze the cheesecloth to speed up the process, but you'll quickly end up with cloudy juice, so be warned. Then 
All you need to do is bottle it and use it in your favorite cocktail. And unlike milk washing, where you mix the cocktail first and then make it clear with the help of milk curdles, using clarified citrus juice doesn't change the texture or soften the cocktail. Your eyes might be fooled, but your palate won't be. We have one more thing to prepare before we start making the cocktails. And that's the garnish inside of the rocks glass for Mr. Cocktail. We'll make a long strip of beetroot paste, which will release subtle earthy aroma and flavors into the cocktail, pairing nicely with the smoky scotch and the herbal benedictine. We already did a similar thing with chocolate paint for a wine cocktail, but since beetroot won't melt, we lose beetroot juice and add some pectin to make it into a paste. Pectin is a gelling agent, mainly extracted from citrus fruits and used to thicken things like jams. As is often the case in mixology, we need to use just the right amount, so a precise kitchen scale is a good investment. We are using 100 grams of bitter juice, so we'll need to add 1.8 grams of pectin. But to get it nicely incorporated, we'll heat up the juice first and blend both of the ingredients in a blender. If you want the beetroot to release its flavors into your cocktail slower, add more pectin, which will also make the paste thicker. Adding less will dissolve it faster, but might also make the beetroot strip to peel off the glass and float into your drink. Filtering the mixture through a cheesecloth will catch any solid particles if you're using a freshly juiced beetroot, but it will also keep back all of the foam from the blending. We really don't want the foam when brushing the beetroot into the glass. Before you place this filter mixture in the fridge, transfer it to a small jar, which you'll be able to shake up before applying to the glass. Again, if you're in a rush, just place it in an ice bath. While that was chilling, we also placed a rocks glass in the freezer. This will ensure that the beetroot paste will stick to it when applied. The key is that you brush a thick strip from the bottom to the top of the glass. The more you apply, the more earthy notes your cocktail will develop as it dissolves into the drink. After your work of art is done, place it back in the freezer until the cocktail is ready. With that done, we can finally start making the cocktails. And if making both, you want to start with Miss Cocktail, since we'll serve it up and it won't dilute in the glass. Oh, and we'll be throwing both of cocktails. Start by chilling the small shaker tin, since we'll be catching the ingredients in the larger tin, making it a bit easier. But this still requires some practice, so avoid carpets. The first thing we'll add will be the batch distilled and handcrafted gin, Monkey 47. Of the exactly 47 plant ingredients in this Schwarzwald dry gin is the lingo berries from the Black Forest that give it its distinguishing flavor. This will be a great choice for the miss. Add 45 ml or 1.5 oz. Next we'll add maraschino. 22.5 ml or 3 quarters of an ounce will give just enough cherry flavored dry sweetness this cocktail needs. Then comes our special ingredient, clarified lemon juice. Just like maraschino, we'll add 22.5 ml or 3 quarters of an ounce. Since there is no pulp in this juice and we won't shake the cocktail, there will be no need for double straining at the end. The refreshing balance of this gin sour cocktail will be enriched by the final ingredient. Since this one has a really strong floral taste and an intense color, 2 bar spoons will be enough. Since we're using clarified lemon juice, there is no need to shake the cocktail, which would agitate the ingredients, making them cloudy. But by throwing it, we'll still add more aeration than we would with stirring. This will release additional aromatics from certain ingredients, like the gin and violet liquor. Depending on the ice you use, you'll see the volume of the drink has decreased after 5 to 6 throws, and you will even see the drink has chilled the bottom shaker. That's when your significant other helps you out with a chilled glass and you're ready to pour this beautiful cocktail. Garnish it with a pansy flower. 
and set it aside while you make the Mr. Cocktail. We're using the same technique, so again, chill the small shaker tin. And let's add the ingredients into the large tin. To learn the drawing technique, I first practiced with water. The base of the Mr. Cocktail could be a special edition of Chiva Scotch, which has been aged for 13 years and selectively matured in the Loroso Sherry casks. This adds an extra layer of rich and intense flavor and aroma. You need something like this to stand out to the strong flavors in this cocktail. So add 45 ml or one and a half ounce. Instead of the honey ginger syrup of the penicillin cocktail, we'll add 50 ml or half an ounce of benedictine. This honey sweetened herbal liqueur will make our version even better. But to balance the cocktail, we'll need to add some more sweetness. One bar spoon of simple syrup will be perfect. And the last ingredient to go into the tin, the clarified lemon juice. If you've got leftover clarified lemon juice that you want to use, you can freeze it and use it another time. Throwing techniques vary just like shaking. You can start slow and go from there. Focus on the phonic liquid and your catching hand. There is no need to twist when you start out. First find that balance of not pouring too fast or lowering your catching hand too fast. The higher the liquid falls, the better the aeration. Properly throwing the cocktail also changes its viscosity and gives it a different mouthfeel than shaking or stirring. Before we pour this into our garnish glass, we'll add a large clear ice cube. Being careful not to touch the beetroot paint. Then slowly pour this cocktail away from the garnish. Already looks great, but let's finish it with a bar spoon of peated scotch as a float. This isn't as visible as a wine float, but trust me, you'll know it's there. And now, the celebration of love and affection can begin. Cheers, my love! The smoky and fresh aroma are very upfront, with subtle herbal notes coming through as well. On the taste, the smokiness is followed by the pleasantly fruity and full-bodied Chivas Extra Scotch. And while this looks like a spirit-forward, old-fashioned like cocktail, your palate will be pleasantly surprised by the balance of sour, herbal and sweet components in the background. All of this is enriched by the light texture we got from throwing. As you'll sip this drink, the earthy notes from the beetroot will add another dimension to this really interesting cocktail. So take your time and enjoy it. Or share it, that's nice too. Ooh, a note. Oh, check down in the comments below what she wrote and let me know if you're planning something special for Valentine's Day. But now, let's try the miss. Since this is basically a stylish aviation, the floral notes are still the star of the show. The botanicals from Monkey 47 were great with the violet liqueur, and even though looks can be deceiving, our palate is rewarded with a delicious sour cocktail. The clarified lemon juice provides a brighter cocktail you'd expect and the subtle fruity dryness of the Moroschino adds some complexity. It's a slight twist on the classic, just enough to make it perfect for a special occasion. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember to show each other love all year. But make this on Valentine's Day. Cheers! <clears throat>